today I'm going to be swimming the 100 breaststroke and the 50 free at the Carlsbad sectionals um, at the Alga Norte pool. Another little local meet before we head to Iowa next week. Let's go. Right before morning practice, I'll just wake up maybe an hour before training and have a UCAN and anything light, something really light. I don't really eat a lot before training um, or before racing. What I do if I have a ton of time is I'll maybe three hours before have like three eggs, some bacon, sausage. And that kind of just gets me ready, gets me a little fueled, but nothing too much that takes a lot of energy to digest. We're gonna make a UCAN shake and then I'll go up and pack my bag, get my breaststroke suit, and uh, show you guys what I look for in a good suit. This is a brand new suit. Not taking that. What we need to do is grab two suits, um, one for the 100 breaststroke, one for the 50 free. This is the freestyle suit. So you see the freestyle suit, the lining, the tape is different. This is the front. So it's got the tape that runs linear here and down the back. The difference is the breaststroke suit, it actually connects between the legs here. So theoretically that helps pull the legs shut. And on the back, it actually runs straight down the line instead of crossing over the back. So it gives you a little more added support in the legs. It's also, there's more compression in the thighs, which is awesome. So I love the fact that there's a breaststroke suit and a freestyle suit. In the freestyle suit, you I basically wear in everything except for breaststrokes, so like 200 IM, 4 IM, long distance, 50 free, like 100 fly, 100 back, all of it's freestyle suit, except for the breaststroke. I'm just gonna grab my jacket. Okay. So I'm ready to go. Now you may think, oh, you're living in California, you're racing outdoors, what a baby. Yes, I, had, I believe I've become soft, but when you're racing, you want your body to be super warm. So wear your parka, wear your jacket, wear your gloves, wear sweatpants. Most important, wear shoes. So much energy leaves the feet and the hands and the head. So cover those up, get warm. I know a lot of the guys think you're pretty cool and tough. You know, like to flex the muscles for the ladies. It's not worth it if you want to swim fast. So that's my little tip. Stay warm all the time. Okay, we're gonna go to the pool. I'll see you guys in the car. I forgot my phone. How does a Gen Z forget his phone? I have no idea where my phone is. Probably left it in the car. Whatever. So it turns out I left my phone at home, which is weird because it was in my hand. It's not a sign. <laughs> Dad thinks it's a sign. Everything's a sign. But um, yeah, man, we're on the way to pool. Uh, what questions? What questions do you think there would have been? questions you're wanting to ask. No, I posted a thing on Instagram letting people know that I'd answer questions for the vlog. And do you get nervous before a race? Okay, do you get nervous before a race? Absolutely. Often. Um, even yesterday, like, I was nervous. Um, not, like, afraid to race, but more the fact that I, like, I want to do well. Um, I think having nerves is a good thing because it shows you that you care. You care about what happens, you care about the result because you've put in a lot of work. Um, but you have to be able to channel those nerves into letting them work for you. You want to, instead of, be, instead of saying, oh, I'm scared or I'm afraid of this or I'm afraid of that, speak excitement. Like, I'm excited to race. I'm looking forward to this opportunity. So if you take the words you use and you change the way you speak about an event, even if you're nervous, you can help those, you can have those nerves work for you. Um, and that's something I've gotten better at over the years because I used to be very bad. I used to get so nervous, so scared that I'd show up to a meet and just get nauseous and get sick. I'd throw up and I'd be so afraid to fail that ultimately I'd set myself up to fail. Oh, 
one of the questions I did see was, does USRPT, so ultra short race pace training, that's our training method, does USRPT work for long distance athletes? And this is actually good to have dad here to help answer this one. What do you think, dad? Of course it does. It's, uh, the only difference here is that um, people judge USRPT of Michael, but um, Michael wants to sh race short races. So obviously we're training for short races. But if we're training for long races, which we have in the past, like the 4am, you can still break a national record in that. Mm -hmm. But we train specifically for that, so it's all about yeah, specificity. That's a good point. We don't do that because I, I hate the longer races. I mean, not hate, I, kudos to those of you who are crazy enough to do them. But what I love and feel like I'm blessed to do is race fast for a shorter distance. So yeah, USRBT absolutely works. The science supports it. I've done it before in the 4IM um, when I was younger, but right now the focus is 50s and 100s. Uh, who's calling? <laughs> Driving to the meet. <laughs> Soon dad will be well versed in the world of vlogging. Okay, so we're just gonna hop in, do a quick warm up. Um, because I got the 53, I noticed yesterday the T on the wall is pretty far. So I'm gonna focus on that, adjust, get ready for a quick turn, do some breaststroke. I mean, I'll end up doing another warm up later because I've got about an hour until I swim still. Feeling really strong. I'm just gonna, I've got like 30 minutes until I need to suit up. So we're just gonna chill, do some slow swimming, and do some pace. A real goal time just to swim it strong, focus on good turns, that's the main goal. And then um, after the 100 breaths, I'll warm down really quickly and we'll head home to go have breakfast with the family and then come back for the 53. We're not in the two fly. Oh, what's up? <laughs> no, I'm just getting ready for the 100 breaths and then the 53 later. Alright. Yes. Hi, nice Hi. to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Boy, you sound like a beast yesterday. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Can I get it. a selfie with you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty slow 100 breast. Um, not entirely sure what was wrong. Uh, do you think, uh, do you know what we could fix for tonight, Dad? No. <laughs> Constant. This is the worst winter California's had in ages. And it has to be when we move here. <laughs> hey, how's the dog all over the time? Just taking a walk. <laughs> it's like enjoying the rain. Morning. For breakfast, we are having croffles. Michaela, explain the art of the croffle. No. <laughs> Michaela's angry because I think I. Wait, is nectarine the. I think I ate it last it night. Like this. It looks like this, but it's just um, got no hair on it. You're going to make Michaela very angry. I ate Michaela's nectarine. I'm sorry. I'll get you another nectarine. I'm sorry too. I ate the other one. <laughs> Croffles, bacon, 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 and we only mom. Croffles because Michael is my special treat for Michaela. Yeah, so I don't get to eat croffles all the time. Croffles are croissant waffles. Um, I'm only able to eat it on the weekends because we carb up Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but throughout the rest of the week, so like Monday through Thursday, I try and eat um, zero to very, very low carbs to stay in ketosis. So, what? Are you? All you guys are asking, what do you do breakfast when you race? Same thing every morning. Three eggs, lots of bacon, cut out the croffles. But today I'm having croffles. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna do recovery. 
Um, my main form of recovery right now is blood flow restriction. So it's katsu. I'm going to put the bands on my arms and I'll show you what it does and why I believe it works. And then even more important is get some sleep. So it's 12.40 now. We race again at 5. It's not a ton of time, but after I'm done katsuing, checking up with some emails and uh, just chilling, I will take a good nap and go back and race. Do not do blood flow restriction by like just tightening the inner tube or anything. This device is specifically for this. It is controlled and monitored so that there's no chance or risk of blood clots and things like that. It's, it's stopping a bit of the blood flow to the regions or the leg that is used to having all this flow. And what it's gonna do is it sends these, um, like our body responds to the stress kind of being put on the legs and the veins filling up with extra blood and then my, my body will send extra white blood cells, um, hormones, growth hormones to repair a muscle that isn't being broken down but it thinks is being broken down. And that way I speed up the recovery. And you'll see like it gets pretty vascular, um, vascular being like veiny. So here's, you can see in this leg that these veins kind of come out. So that's kind of cool. Usually my legs aren't this veiny. And then even right here, this vein pops out arms now on so you see what it is is the machine basically hooks up to these tubes these tubes inflate the bands with air and it's controlled so that when it goes through each cycle it gets tighter tighter releases lets a little more blood flow tighter releases let more blood flow release and that cycling or why it's called katsu cycling is it cycles the blood so basically i'm getting fresh blood through these muscles to help prepare them quicker it's pretty simple. Um, the science can be complex, but for me, I try and break it down as simple as possible. Um, and I love it. I love, like, the, it's kind of painful. I don't know if you can see the, the veins pop out pretty big. And, um, you know, some people get queasy at it. I think it looks cool. But it's, it's amazing how my body feels afterwards. Good stuff. I'm going to finish this cycle, watch some more psych. And, uh, and then I'm gonna hop in bed and take a nap for maybe, what, an hour? Hey. Hey, Addy. Thanks for napping with me. We're gonna get ready. I'll see you guys in the car on the way to the pool. <laughs> We're on our way to the pool. Um, just the three of us. Mikhail decided she doesn't wish to support me. <laughs> it's cold and it's raining. It is cold and rainy. I, if I wasn't her, I wouldn't go either. If you wasn't her? If I was her, I wouldn't uh, go. <laughs> you want? You wasn't her. So I wasn't her. You aren't her. going. <laughs> Yeah, I just woke up. But yeah, good nap, very good nap, feeling great. At least it's not raining as much as it was oh earlier. Goodness, yeah. Clark Hopo is asking, at what age did you think you could be this good and what event? I don't know if it was necessarily that I thought I'd be this good at a certain age, but I definitely, um, when I was 10, I broke my first national age group record in Lawrence, Kansas, where we used to live. Um, that's when I signed my first autograph. We still joke about it. I could break the record quicker than it took me to sign my name it was pretty bad really so I started practicing my signature and that's when I first thought okay I I can do this like I want to be a professional what athlete like as an athlete I knew I wanted more of that like I I enjoyed winning breaking records um, and two it was interesting and I probably didn't realize this at the time but it was easy to kind of brighten someone's day by interacting with them which sounds weird saying that, but it was it's something I love doing. That's why I love doing local meets. I get to meet local swimmers and friends and hang out and show people that there's nothing any different to me. Yes, I can swim fast, but I I love the sport just like everybody else does, and I think it's cool. So if you guys are at a swim meet, you want to hang out, come talk to me. Just come say hi. Let's let's do it. Um, and that's yeah. So like when I was 10, I fell in love with the sport, and. Obviously, there's been up and down days for sure. You still, you know, learn a lot throughout it. But that's uh, the moment. It was actually, it was All Stars when I was 10 in Lawrence, Kansas. Yeah. Okay. 
time to race. So we're gonna have my mom, she's graciously offered to film for our races tonight. I'm gonna set the settings up to uh, 120 so she can Perfect. get it close, get it nice, and then mom will film that for us. I'm recording. Oh, is it a video? Maybe whatever. Oh. Go Michael. <laughs> go Michael. Is that we have to do two? Is go Michael. Go Michael. Go Michael. What are you doing? On the wall. Right. Are you gonna? Are we gonna, are we gonna make excuses? He knows way too far. He's doing it. He got it. He got. He said he got a straight leg on the wall. I mean, to go in 1970 with a turn like that. That's yeah, it's something not great though. You'll huh? be great at Iowa. That turn was almost worse than your turn in Coronado. Michael, I gotta, see if, I gotta see the video again. Yeah, I, we don't do excuses. No, no, that was so bad. I literally, so this is the wall. I hit the wall like this. Dude, that was. I had no speed coming off the wall. I was just, I just wanted to overdrive just to at least win the race. The swimming was really good. Like, I'm so stoked for the long course 50. Like, 21 6, easy. So. Uh, the swimming was great. Best swim, but just the turn was nice so good. We are done for the night. Um, 53 was good, 19.7. Um, few details went wrong, missed the turn, but swimming feels super fast. So, super amped, ready for Iowa next week. We're gonna go have, <laughs> we're gonna have dinner with the fam, and then maybe get some ice cream with the boys afterwards. You guys know what to do, leave a like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.